everyone welcome back to my channel so some of you guys requested a video about the menstrual cycle and I know a lot of you guys have already heard that topic so many times before but today I'm gonna show you a simple way to think about the menstrual cycle like uh, how to think of the big picture and I'm, I'm gonna also walk you through a you world question to show you how uh, step one questions would come on that topic so let's get started so I need you to remember that the ultimate goal of the whole of this entire cycle is that every month we are preparing for an incoming baby. So imagine it like that. Every month I need a uterus that is capable of receiving an incoming baby, right? And it all starts at the level of the hypothalamus. Before we dive into the menstrual cycle, one thing I want you to know is that it all starts, the hypothalamus uh, secretes GnRH in a pulsatile manner. And it is this GnRH that stimulates the anterior pituitary to produce gonadotropins. And these gonadotropins, FSH and LH, are what would stimulate the ovary to produce estrogen and progesterone, which would finally build the uterus. And so that means that the more LH and FSH we have, the more the estrogen and progesterone, because these act at specific steps in the synthesis of these hormones, right? However, Estrogen and progesterone have negative feedback effects on these hormones so that the more the estrogen and progesterone you have, the less the LH and FSH. You can see here how these relationships are a, a little bit reversed and I'm going to use this piece of information later so keep that in mind, all right? So this is my big picture way of thinking about the menstrual cycle that's uh, as if it's two phases with ovulation in the middle, okay? Phase one starts just after menses, so I like to think about it as fixing the damage. We have a uterus that you need to prepare for an incoming guest or for an incoming baby. And so you can't just receive a baby on a uterus just after menses because it has been shed, which is why phase one aims at fixing the damage. And F is for FSH because this phase is dominated by FSH and estrogen, which would fix the damage. Then comes ovulation and phase two starts. After we've already fixed it, then we need to um, like modify it and build it enough and make it hospitable for implantation. And that's prep for the baby, P for progesterone, all right? So... At stage two or phase two, we're preparing for an incoming baby, and that's dominated by LH and progesterone. And so, even though our final goal is at the level of the uterus, however, it we can't just jump to the uterus right away. Rather, there are it, this is controlled by hormones that come from the pituitary, and then the pituitary hormones would stimulate the ovary. The ovary would then secrete estrogen and progesterone that will build the uterus, right? And so in phase one, which is the uh, powered by FSH and estrogen, we are um, building or developing a follicle through follicle stimulating hormone that would stimulate the follicle to secrete estrogen and estrogen would fix the damage in what we call the proliferative phase of the cycle where the uterus is just proliferating or growing in thickness. After that, ovulation comes around and we're preparing for the baby. And this phase is dominated by LH and progesterone. LH keeps stimulating the corpus luteum to secrete progesterone that will be responsible for the secretory phase of the uterine cycle, where the uterus is um, glandular and its vessels become coiled and it's almost ready for implantation. And so 
I am in the, in the in the following slides. I'm gonna split this curve that you that I got straight out of your world. I'm gonna split this picture by uh, ovulation. So I'm gonna talk about phase one alone, uh, which is fixing the damage, and phase two separately, which is prepping for the baby. Alright guys, so I'm first going to start talking about phase one of the cycle, which is from zero, which is the menses, all the way up to day 14, which is until ovulation. Alright, so this marks ovulation. The pulsatile secretion of GnRH from the uh, hypothalamus will stimulate FSH and LH production from the anterior pituitary and it is these levels of LH and FSH that are gonna stimulate the ovary to start producing estrogen so that we can build the uterus all right so as you can see as of the levels of FSH and LH rise, which would be a result of pulsatile secretion of GnRH, the estrogen, which was at a low level, starts to rise as a result because it is being stimulated by these uh, gonadotropin hormones. All right. However, as estrogen starts rising, it has a negative feedback effect on these hormones, and therefore these hormones have to fall. All right. So after estrogen rises, FSH and LH will fall as a result of negative feedback. However, near uh, day 14 or near the time of ovulation, a plot twist happens, which is that as estrogen rises, FSH and LH surprisingly spike and shoot up so much, particularly LH. And this part is very high you to know. It is very important for you to know that a positive feedback relationship occurs near ovulation and it is essential actually that this spike in LH in particular occurs so that ovulation can happen. Without this LH spike, ovulation cannot happen. And I'm going to tell you why it's very high yield to know this when we reach the questions. All right, so this is the curve I've shown you earlier. During the follicular phase of the cycle, we are trying to build a follicle. And so FSH that is secreted from the pituitary has two functions. One is that it should build a good enough follicle. That's one, and that's why it's called follicle stimulating hormone. And at the same time, both FSH and LH together, while building this follicle, are also stimulating it to produce estrogen. And the purpose of that is to fix the damage that menses have done. Menses have shed the entire uterine wall. We need to build it back up in order to prepare for the baby. And so we need enough estrogen to build the uterus during the proliferative phase of the uterine cycle. All right. And it's very ideal to know, as I mentioned earlier, that the uh, even though all along estrogen has a negative feedback effect on LH and FSH, yet, re, yet near the time of ovulation, uh, the spike of estrogen is associated with an overshooting of FSH and LH, particularly LH. You have to know that. And I'm going to show you guys right now a question or how questions would come on this particular topic uh, with regard to this point. Alright guys, so the typical way that questions on the menstrual cycle will come will be in the context of a polycystic ovary syndrome. Like they are going to test your knowledge about the menstrual cycle in this context. Alright, so this question is about a woman with PCOS and she's not able to conceive for the past two years. Uh, she shows all the manifestations of PCOS, like irregular menses, uh, because she has chronic anovulation, uh, she's obese, uh, she's coarse hair on her face and abdomen. Um, 
clomiphene therapy, which uh, like mimics um, like it's something that acts on the hypothalamus to um, simulate a, a a pulsatile GnRH production fails. Like uh, this therapy uh, failed with this woman, and uh, she then receives ovulation induction therapy with a short course of menotropins, followed by a single injection of HCG. Now you really gotta know this, uh, like this combination, and that here we are mimicking what happens physiologically in the menstrual cycle in order to help this woman ovulate. That's the first step, and then in turn conceive. Without ovulation, this woman will not have a an oocyte ready to be fertilized to produce a baby and so the main problem here is anovulation all right so we are mimicking the normal physiological menstrual cycle through these hormones we're given so what are these hormones he's asking the use of hcg therapy primarily mimics which of the following physiologic events you gotta know that hcg mimics lh all right, HCG has the same structure as LH. All right, so anyone who knows this piece of information will be able to answer this question. But even if you don't, all right, even though everyone should know that HCG has the same structure as LH, all right, but even if you don't and you just know like how this combination works, I'm going to show you the whiteboard we saw earlier. This woman is unable to achieve this LH surge. So we are simulating the normal physiology of the menstrual cycle by giving her menotropins. All right, menotropins are mimics of FSH. All right, so menotropins stimulate the follicle just like FSH does. And so we keep giving her menotropins all through the follicular phase to build a nice follicle. And then come day of ovulation, we give her a single shot of HCG. And that's in an attempt to mimic the LH surge. So at this point, we give her HCG single shot. All right, so this way, by the menotropin course plus single shot of HCG, we are mimicking the FSH um, follicle stimulation plus the LH surge in order to stimulate ovulation. This way, we have been able to produce an oocyte through, like, uh, we have been able to help this woman ovulate so that this oocyte can then be fertilized and uh, help this um, woman conceive. All right, and so HCG mimics LH. All right, and you are going to understand this better when we start talking about phase two. So in phase two of the cycle, which is called the luteal phase in ovarian terms, um, is powered by LH. LH is luteinizing hormone. Now, in, at this stage, we want to prepare the uterus for the baby. So we need to create a thick, hospitable uterus uh, that is ready to receive the baby. All right, and the hormone that will do that predominantly will be progesterone. Now, this progesterone is secreted from the corpus luteum. However, the corpus luteum can't just work like that. It has to be stimulated by LH. And so in order for the corpus luteum to keep secreting progesterone to sufficient levels that would build a nice uterus, it needs continuous stimulation by LH. At first, this is not a problem because we have enough LH that will stimulate the corpus luteum to produce progesterone, which can then maintain the uterus. However, you need to remember that both estrogen and progesterone have negative feedback effects on the pituitary, which means that the more the progesterone and estrogen we have, the, the more the negative feedback, and then that would result in a drop in LH, 
which means that eventually LH levels will drop and at this point there is going to be no stimulation to the corpus luteum and it's going to regress. Now if the corpus luteum is not stimulated then it's no longer going to produce progesterone and its levels will fall and so would the uterus at which point menstruation occurs as the uterine lining sheds. All right, unless there is an alternative to LH, which is if the woman does get pregnant. What is the alternative to LH that will keep on stimulating the corpus luteum to continue secreting progesterone and maintaining the uterus? That is beta HCG. And so if we do have an embryo because the oocyte is fertilized, then the embryo will secrete the alternative to LH, which is beta HCG, and that will act as a surrogate or alternative to uh, um, LH with, um, with corpus luteum stimulation, and will keep on stimulating the corpus luteum to secrete progesterone. Then progesterone can maintain the uterus or the endometrium until the placenta forms. And if you know this piece of information, you should have been able to answer the question we talked about earlier about the woman uh, for, wh for whom we gave beta HCG uh, that mimics the LH surge. Actually, we did that because she has PCOS. And it's based on the fact that we figured out that beta-HCG is kind of like LH in stimulating the corpus luteum. And so uh, scientists have thought of this way that, oh my god, since beta-HCG has the same structure, then why don't we use it in place of the LH surge to uh, simulate physiological the physiological menstrual cycle and help women with anovulation. So that was the whole point behind it. All right, guys, so here is the summary of the menstrual cycle. That's how UWorld will show you the picture. There is the ovarian cycle divided into follicular phase where we're building a follicle and then ovulation comes in the middle and then the uh, luteal phase where we are at the stage of corpus luteum that will secrete um, progesterone to maintain the uterus. And if you want to talk in uterine terms, then you would say, I have the proliferative phase where we're building or fixing the damage that menses have caused, and that is through FSH and estrogen. And the second phase is we are preparing for the incoming baby, and that is mainly through progesterone. All right. I hope that makes sense, guys.